today I want to explain um, a couple of things about Live 2D. Firstly, why use Live 2D? You might be thinking to yourself, oh, I could use anything else. I could use Vroid, I could uh, make my own 3D model in Blender. And you know, that's, that's fair, you can do that. But there is reasons why people use Live 2D. And like, firstly, I would say, uh, we can use flat images to create the animations in Live 2D. You only need a basic uh, PSD. Um, everything has to be separated, of course, but this is still less time consuming than hand drawn animation, hand drawing it frame by frame. And I also think it has a lower learning curve than 3D modeling. So. It just depends on your preference, honestly. But if you think, if you're an illustrator, it might be a better option for you because you can do pretty much everything yourself without having to learn a skill like 3D, where 3D is useful, but I think it, this is more intuitive for illustrators. Then secondly, we can use the Live 2D, um, the Live 2D model in programs such as VTube Studio, Face Rig, PRPR Live, Animes, the new phrase rig, uh, Live 2D Viewer EX, um, and many, I think there's a lot more programs, but they have basically plugins that allow you to use an exported Live 2D model, and like I'm using right here, ha ha, hee hoo ha, <laughs> we can track our face. I use it on stuff like live streams or videos, and a lot of people really like using their own avatar rather than their face. So, once again, it's a preference thing. <laughs> and I think the other major reason you might want to use Live 2D instead of a 3D, a 3D model is that these 2D models can be less... Um, you know, they can use less processing power than 3D can. Although I haven't used a 3D model very much, so I, I can't attest to that a lot. But considering the capabilities that you can now track from your phone, I'm not sure how much that really matters. But I would say that a, a major reason people choose Live 2D is um, they just particularly like the aesthetic overall. Um, because I, th I think 3D models can look just as good as Live 2D, but there's also something a little bit magical about watching your flat image come to life. Am I, am I wrong? <laughs> Okay, um, I also want to explain a little bit about how I do my models. You know, everyone does theirs differently. I'm pretty happy with my most recent one from Naughty Boop. I'll link her, her links in the, the description and stuff, but, um, she's very cute. Look at her. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, she smile. <laughs> so, I think the first thing to explain is the eyes, because normally my workflow I work on the uh, eye blinking motion and then I'd go on to the mouth motion and then I start to work on the other things uh, like the head, then the body. That's generally just the workflow I go through, I think. There's, there's certain reasons that are hard to explain straight away, but I think that works very well. If you just have like in your mind a, a sort of step-by-step -step process, I think eyes are a very good place to start. Um, I have a, all of the, the the live streams on my channel. I've live streamed everything, so you can see everything in full there. There's a lot of times where I just stop and talk a lot. I'm very bad at multitasking with talking and <laughs> modeling, but don't worry, it's all there. I'm there's only a very small things that I did off stream, um, but basically for my eye movement. I have these two parts here, you don't necessarily need that, you could do these as one part. But I don't remember why I split this into two, I did it like a year ago and I didn't change the eyes much when I redid her model, so that's just that. But yeah, I like that line separate, these eyelashes separate, put them back. I like, um, I have this heart pupil separate. I think because it's a more unusual shape, you, I would separate that. But if your pupil is just a circle, you wouldn't necessarily have to because if your your pupil is a circle, you can use your mesh like this if you want to do what I do where 
wait that's wrong um <laughs> don't worry um if you want to do what i do where you move the pupil around and it can look a bit more 3d if i i can show you right here on the angle x it moves inwards kind of like a 3d i would so you can separate the pupil to do this but um i don't think it's totally necessary i just separated this one because it's a um it's a heart shape which is a bit more annoying to do with the art mesh if it's a circle it would be a lot easier to work with separate the highlight layers separate this bottom lash layer you could also separate these little tiny ones here it's really up to you how many layers that you separate your model into i get asked this quite a lot by my friends like how far like how many how how small should i separate my parts and i just say to them almost every single time well if you're really really concerned just just make separate them more because the thing is is really annoying to separate them after the fact that you've drawn them compared to just merging down pieces that you've already separated so i would just say separate more than you think you have to if you're really concerned if you don't know if you're not used to the program live 2d and you're not confident just separate more and you'll probably be fine <laughs> and then i have the eye bag here i think it's cuter if we separate that because it goes like what and then i also separate i have these on the one layer you can do that i i because the the art mesh is quite far away so i can just move this around like this it's not a big deal you could have them on two different layers but i'm also lazy that's another thing you've got to understand i try and take shortcuts whenever i can <laughs> which is probably not a good idea don't don't always listen to me just separate if you're really worried <laughs> um so i will show the video a little bit now on how i did this so for the eyes i will generally do all of the art mesh by hand I find that if you do the automatic generated art mesh that sometimes uh, the vertices are not in the place that you really want them to be and it can look a little jagged um, when you deform them. I will generally tell people for the art mesh if you do it by hand or automatically generate. It doesn't make too much of a difference sometimes like you could automatically generate all of the art mesh but I would just tell people when it comes to the face you're probably better off hand doing the art mesh so the mouth the eyes especially even the eyebrows and the head shape i'll i would recommend doing that you could do the whole body by hand as well but that's also a lot of work <laughs> and it might be a bit too time consuming when the automatic generation works just as well okay so i'll explain a little bit about this little this little icon here you hover over it it says deform path edit and so this is what i normally use for doing the eyes i'm going to just delete it and don't worry about me deleting it this is on a different save file to the original one so you don't have to worry too much but yeah after i've made this art mesh here it's pretty simple i will make a few points along here um i don't remember exactly what it looked like just before now but i don't know maybe four ish or five ish should probably suffice and i already have this moving because i have done it but i'm gonna take everything off because like i said this is a test one this is a test <laughs> and i'm going to just kind of show how it works so the IL open here, I'm probably not going to go too, too deep into exactly how everything works. I've just moved my head a bit so we can see over in the parameter section here. IL open. We can see that it goes from 0 to 1. Um, you can always check what the default state is by going to this three rectangle icon here, clicking reset default the values. And then it'll tell you the default so that we know the default is one so that means one is when her eyes are open because it would be kind of weird if her default was eyes closed am I, am I, am I right like 
we we want that to be the default if you do it the opposite way around there's a, there's a way to fix that so don't worry but if you do one her eyes are closed basically in vtube studio when your eyes are open your eyes will look closed and when your eyes are closed they'll look open <laughs> it'll just be reversed zero is closed one is open now we need to make keyframes we can do that several ways because we go from zero to one we only need two keyframes we, we need one at zero we need one at one um so we can press this button here it's got two little green icons you can basically understand the green icons the green circles are the key frames so we go Pachi! and now it's green you need to always make sure it's green before you start making editing any animations because if we take it away for a second it's white right now and we say oh one is open zero is closed and then we go to close and then we try and make a you know a close and everything and then you go back to one and it's still like that that's because you don't have keyframes and you're not actually you want to go from point a to b and you want your a to be closed and your b to be open but you don't have that b anymore because you've just edited the whole layer without using the parameter at all so that's why we need the keyframes or else it's just a flat image that you've um transformed so press the petite. We press that. Dun dun. Now we can edit it properly. Make sure it's green. Um, sometimes it's a bit fidgety on this parameter. So I make sure when you're over at the green icons, right click instead of left click. And then you will lock onto that green icon. Sometimes when you use the left click just once, you won't exactly be there you'll be at like 0 0.9 and you need to be on the keyframes exactly so just use right clicks instead of left clicks um, to change between them and so let's go to 0, 0.0 that will be our closed state and we want to go close so we go down i hold shift that way you know that oh it's not going all the way over here by accident we hold shift it's going straight down and there won't be too many complications doing the eyes i hold shift a lot when moving these control points you can see the deform up path tool um rather than individually moving these we can use these nodes we created earlier to make a general <laughs> deformity basically um you're deforming them on a path rather than by individual vertices so i recommend just putting these nodes on you put them on the curves and then just try it out i feel like a lot of live 2d you don't necessarily have to straight away understand the crazy mathematics but just put the nodes on and start moving them i normally always hold shift at the start and then as you can see we're at zero and then we go up and we're getting a closed eye shape all of a sudden. It's crazy! And you can just quickly do that with the other parts as well. Um, I'm gonna do it pretty rough. It's not gonna be super pretty like her regular model. It takes a bit more time. You can look at the, the live stream bud for that. Um, with these top eyelashes, what I like to do is use this red box and make them go like this and you can see they kind of flap in the wind flap, 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 flap. <laughs> okay okay so i'll explain next ah. how to kind of make this go down here so the sclera the eye whites i'll call it the sclera we basically want to flatten this and then use the deform path tool and make some nodes and you can move it Chicka chicka chan. Chicka chan. So the way this works, I'm gonna undo that real quick to kind of show. Um, it does this magical thing where the iris also disappears in the eye highlight. That is because we're using a clipping ID. Now what a clipping ID is, if you're an illustrator and use a program such as Clip Studio Paint, Photoshop, 
It's the clipping layers. It's the exact same concept. Basically, this iris is clipped to the eye whites and it cannot move outside it. If we delete the clipping ID, it's over here and here in the inspector box clipping ID. Delete, press enter. You can see all of a sudden it can move anywhere. So to do that, you want to click the eye white. So you need to copy the ID of the layer something will be clipped to. Not the layer that you want to clip to something. You copy the ID of the layer that you want and other, another object to be clipped to. So we'll copy that. It might be art number 364. Um, it might be some other name. They kind of auto generate them. It doesn't matter. You can change the ID if you want to. I don't because I don't worry about that too much. And then we paste it on the irises clipping ID box right here. Make sure you press enter and it will be clipped that you cannot move it outside of the eye white. And so when you do this and hide it behind the eyelash, um, you may have to tweak the, the, the keyframes a bit. You can see it's peeking out at about here. I would... Um, I would fix that with adding extra keyframes. But overall, you can see like, oh, it's, it's, it's pretty cute, you know? She's blinking. I didn't do the eye bags in this part. You do it essentially the same way. You just deform the part and make it into the shape that you want it to be. Just like so. And it's pretty simple. You Like I said, check my live stream if you want to see more detailed how I did it. This is like really quickly done in like two minutes, three minutes or whatever. But it's the basic idea of closing the eyelid. You just need the one and two keyframes. And the way Live 2D works, it just goes from this one frame and it will automatically generate the in-betweens for you. And then... I also use the eye smile. I change it so I edit the parameter. You can't see the box that comes up. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, but a box will come up. And I change the minimum to minus... Minus one. So that way I can make three points. And... Uh, in VTube Studio, if you change the outputs, you can make it so naturally she can make this face rather than having to press a button so yeah you can put basically one object can be put onto up to three parameters at a time and so you use this to make them smile and stuff uh, i can't exactly show it because i messed it up on this file just to show you how to close an eye uh let me open her regular her regular <laughs> Yeah, like this. The I smile, it will be an automatically gen uh, generated parameter when you make a model. Um, you don't have to make these parameters. They will mostly likely be made by default. And if you use VTube Studio, when you smile, your character will smile with you basically. Yeah. So that's everything for this this video I mean if you have any questions feel free to ask me <laughs> I'd like to answer some questions because it's kind of hard for me to figure out what to say sometimes I'm too too awkward <laughs> I'm sorry if I rambled on a bit too much uh, <laughs> during during this video but you know I'm just out here trying so please please ask me about anything you've seen here that you want to know more about and i can make a video more specialized towards that so thanks bye